Greetings, this is Jay Egg with Egg Geothermal Consulting. I've had a lot of requests from folks to understand exactly how it is that heat pumps work. So what we're going to do today is a primer on heat pumps. In order to understand heat pumps, I think it's important to understand how heat pumps are rated. First of all, in ener energy consumption, uh, appliances and equipment are normally rated in coefficient of performance. The coefficient of performance is important in that it shows how much energy is consumed and how much energy is produced from an appliance. In the case of electric resistance heat strips, one kilowatt of electricity equals one kilowatt of heat. So electric resistance heat strips, such as a blow dryer or even a toaster or one of those uh, little space heaters, would have a coefficient of performance of one. Buildings are heated when, with regard to heat pumps by the pumping of heat. And let me explain this just a little bit. This um, image shows a building that's acting kind of like a refrigerator. Think of a refrigerator sitting in your, um, in your kitchen, and it's trying to cool this building. In order to cool it, you see the blue arrow here, it needs to remove heat from the building. So on this air, sort, air source heat pump example, it's pumping heat from out of the building to the outside. So this is an electric air conditioner, which is essentially a heat pump. They use electricity, and they use about one unit of energy to pump about three units of heat. Now, I'm going to explain a little bit about how that works. First of all, we have to think of a heat pump as just that. It is a heat pump, just like a water pump is a water pump. If you think of a submersible well pump down in a borehole <clears throat> uh, in the ground, that water pump is energized once it's inside of the water table and it can pump water up into a house for people to use for drinking, bathing, showering, and so forth. A heat pump is exactly the same. It is a pump that pumps heat from one place that has available heat such as this place which has available water into a space where it's needed. Just like this water pump, if you set it up in the air or up on a picnic table in this person's yard and energized it, it would not spontaneously produce water. The same thing with a heat pump. It needs a source from which to pump the heat. So in the basics of a geothermal uh, heat pump, this will apply it to air source also. A geothermal heat pump uses one unit of electricity from the grid to pump roughly four units of free energy from the earth, and this is depicting a heating mode. Now when you add those four units of energy to this one unit of uh, electricity, the heat pump's able to deliver a grand total of five units of energy. If we break this down, what you'll see is in this three-ton heat pump example that I'm using here, a three-ton heat pump can produce 8.4 kilowatt hours or kilowatts of heat every hour it runs. Here to break it down is some of my favorite images. I'm very young at heart and I love simplicity. So just like the water pump is used to pump water up into a building, a geothermal system pumps solar heat stored in the ground up and into the home. And here you see, in the middle of the winter, our happy house is pumping heat from the relatively warm ground. And in the winter time, it's pumping heat out of the house into the relatively cool earth. I don't expect everybody or even anybody to fully understand the refrigeration cycle. It's something that I've been uh, working with for the last 35 years and I still think it's fascinating and a little bit difficult to understand. So what I want to do is kind of break down this whole thing, which I could put a dotted line around it, would be the equivalent of a heat pump. Of course, in a geothermal example, this would be the loop that ties in with the heat pump. And the heat pump then can pump cool or warm air or any type of cooling or heating around a building or anything else. 
It's a little bit difficult to understand, but there are always four components in a refrigeration system. And this is called the Carnot, Carnot refrigeration cycle. Anything that cools or heats, with few exceptions, will use the Carnot refrigeration cycle. Every Carnot refrigeration cycle piece of equipment has a compressor and an expansion valve. And then it has a coil that gives off heat, which is called a condenser, and a coil which gives off the cool, which is called an evaporator. So just to explain a little bit about how this works, we have a couple of images. And then we'll show you an animated heat pump cycle. So let's start with the winter outdoor. Now this is an air source heat pump and we talked about the compressor. The compressor takes a vapor that's low pressure and low temperature and compresses it to high pressure and high temperature. And then it puts it through something called a condenser, which would do exactly what you think it would do. It condense a vapor into a liquid. And this is um, some of the basic laws of thermodynamics and phase change we're talking about here. So just follow me a little bit. Imagine this is water. This now high pressure, high temperature liquid goes through an expansion valve, which is not a lot different from a spray nozzle on the end of a garden hose. It drops the pressure and flashes the liquid so that it's ready to turn into a vapor, just like the mist setting. As it goes through this expansion valve, it come, becomes a low pressure, low temperature liquid. All it has to do is go into the evaporator and have a little bit of relatively warm air passed over it. What happens is it absorbs, that liquid absorbs a tremendous amount of heat energy and gives off cool on the other side. What you have on the end of the evaporator, because it's evaporating the liquid, is a cool temperature, low pressure vapor, which comes back through this pipe again, and then it goes into the compressor to become a high temperature, high pressure vapor. The reverse happens in the summer when it's cooling. By the way, this cooling is outdoor, as you can see, so it's taking cold energy out of the house, which is, which is um, not appro an appropriate way to say it, but that's what it's doing, and it's pumping heat from outside by manipulating this temperature to the and pumping it up to a warmer temperature. Remember I said it takes a cool temperature, low pressure gas, and makes it a high temperature, high pressure gas. So this condenser now becomes the heating source and dumps all of that heat into this indoor space. Just so you can see how this works, there's this great YouTube video like you're watching here. I've just integrated it into this video. So watch it operating in the summer mode. In the summer mode, you're wanting to cool the indoors. So the evaporator, it's evaporating this liquid and pulling a tremendous amount of heat out of the air, producing cool. Outside, it's taking that it's taking that energy and pumping it up to a high pressure, high temperature gas where it can give off heat to the outdoor temperature. In the winter, you just saw this four-way valve switch. It switches and it starts bringing, even though it's 50, 40, even below freezing outside, this Carnot refrigeration cycle and this compressor can manipulate that temperature, pump it up to a high pressure, high temperature gas, and pump it through a condenser, which provides heating inside the building. It's a fabulous technology and I'd invite you to um, review it on your own. As I promised, I would uh, like to apply this to air source heat pumps. This is basically an air source configuration, meaning this is a split system, a heat pump, that's in the process of heating the space, hence the red here, and cooling the space here. Um, while it's in the process of cooling, it's taking heat out of the building using this Carnot refrigeration cycle and pumping it to the outdoors. Even though outdoors it might be 90 or 100 degrees, it uses that Carnot refrigeration cycle to manipulate the heat by compressing it to a higher temperature, uh, higher pressure gas and transferring that heat. 
of course in the winter time you do the same thing and you're pulling heat out of the air even though it seems much colder and it is much colder than what you need and compress it to a higher temperature and a higher pressure so these heat pumps use one unit of electricity to create three or more units of heat just some conversion factors for you a lot of people um, hear the word kilowatt thrown around and they'll hear BTUs thrown around. Um, probably important to note that a BTU, which air conditioners are regularly rated in BTUs, is a British thermal unit. This is actually the same amount of energy as burning a wooden matchstick from top to bottom. It's also the same amount of energy it takes to lift one pound of water one degree Fahrenheit. Now, so we have a conversion, 1 watt of electricity equals 3.4 BTUs or 3.4 matchsticks in, in heat energy. Um, you'll find heat pumps rated in EER, energy efficiency rating, and COP. We're going to leave EER alone. It's a little more complex and not needed. Most of the world doesn't uh, use it. The uh, U.S. does. but coefficient of performance works both for heating and cooling. In COP, I'll show you just for those who are interested in this part, um, a three ton geothermal heat pump or heat pump, it doesn't matter, any heat pump would be rated for 36,000 BTUs because 12,000 BTUs equals one ton. So if you hear the word ton, that is 12,000 BTUs, 12 times 3 is 36,000. This 3 ton heat pump consumes 7,200 BTUs or the equivalent of 2,110 watts to do its work. 2,110 watts and there's the conversion, I won't go into it now. Now it delivers 36,000 BTUs or 10,550 watts of heat. So for 2,110 kilowatts, I mean 2,110 watts of energy it delivers 10,550, which means this three ton geothermal heat pump is operating. You can do the division. That's a COP of 5 when you divide 10.5 by 2.1 kilowatts, which is also equivalent of 17 EER. But I promise we wouldn't talk too much about that. This three ton this three ton heat pump generates 10.5 kilowatts from 2.1 kilowatts which is sorry it jumped there which is a net of 8440 watts of energy each hour it runs just like as if it was a a solar photovoltaic cell it's able to deliver that much heat for less energy in the cooling mode it does much the same thing except it acts as a refrigerator in your kitchen and it pumps heat out of the box or the house and back into the ground or in the case of an air source heat pump it would pump it outside. I hope this has begun to explain to you how heat pumps work and how they're rated with the coefficient of performance. If you have any questions you can always uh, Email me at jegg.geo at gmail.com or you can read about it in any one of these wonderful publications where I like to share information. Thank you.